Unit 9 in AP Chemistry is actually two little units. The first half of this is about the second law of thermodynamics, and the second half is about electrochemistry. So as we start Unit 9, Section 1, we're talking about entropy and what this is. Now, as you can see here, the letter or the variable that we use to talk about entropy is S. We've talked about this a bit in Unit 7, but we're going to talk about it much more here in Unit 9. Now, entropy, if you were to look this up in a physics book or in a chemistry textbook or maybe even in the dictionary, you'd find that entropy is defined as the quantity of possible energy states of the components of a system. And so, in, in other words, the more possible energy states that molecules can have, the higher the entropy is going to be. Now, a colloquial and, to be completely honest, for AP chemistry, a definition that is just as good is the amount of disorder in a system or the amount of chaos in a system. If you remember this, you're probably going to get the answer right every time if you're answering the questions about which one, which uh, system has more order or disorder. Now, what we're talking about when we say order or disorder is if you take a look at a solid. We've learned already in this course, uh, way back in those earlier units, that in a solid, you have a very nice, orderly, often a very crystalline arrangement of molecules, very orderly. A solid has very little entropy. In fact, of all the states of matter, solid is going to have the lowest entropy of them all. Now, if you move up to a liquid, well, you know what a liquid is like. The, the molecules are a little bit farther apart. They have a little bit more freedom to move around. They can slip and slide around each other. And so in a liquid, there's more disorder. There's more, there are more possible energy states in those molecules. So we'd say that in a liquid, we have more entropy than we'd have in a solid. Solid is the least, liquid is higher. Now think about a gas. In a gas, you have molecules that are moving all over the place, right? They have the most freedom of motion. Molecules are, for all practical purposes, independent of each other. They can go pretty much wherever they want to go in a gas. And so as a result, we have a whole lot more chaos, a whole lot more entropy in a gas. So if you're thinking about the three main states of matter, solids have the least entropy, liquids have somewhere in the middle, and gas has the highest amount of entropy. Now, let's visualize this in the real world and how you might imagine this. Here we have a picture of a, uh, a hotel that no longer exists. And it, as you can see, it's all nice and orderly. We have a bunch of uh, rooms in this hotel. It has floors. And then after something happens to the hotel, perhaps an implosion when they decide to destroy the hotel, here's what you have left over. So, as you can see, we have an increase in entropy. So, it went from this very orderly or this very low entropy state over here on the left to a much higher entropy state over here on the right. A whole lot more disorder. And you can probably imagine that in order to get from the first state to the second state, it doesn't take a whole lot of energy. Now, it does take some energy. It takes maybe some sticks of dynamite that are placed in the right locations. It might take some sort of, of other, uh, you know, some chemical reaction. But in order to get from the left state to the right state, it's actually pretty simple. Now, if you go from the right state to a restoration of the left-hand state here, is that going to be very easy to accomplish? And you probably know that it's not. It would almost be impossible to go from this very high entropy state on the right and restore the hotel to what it looked like before the implosion. So as you can see, it's more natural or it's easier to go from a low entropy state to a higher entropy state than the other way around most of the time. And we'll talk more about this later on. Now here's another example. Here's a, what looks to be a pretty nice looking house, mansion of some kind. And then if we were to just abandon that house, well, after maybe 10 or 20 years, this is what that same house looks like. As you can see, once again, very nice and orderly originally, 
in the second state, it is a whole lot more disorderly. It has more entropy. So we say that once again, this is increasing entropy. And once again, I will ask you to think about the following. It is a whole lot easier for the first state to go to the second state, isn't it, than to go in reverse. All you have to do in order for the first condition to become the second condition is to abandon the house. You don't have to do a whole lot. On the other hand, if you want to go from the second state and restore the house to its former glory, well, you're going to have to invest a lot of energy, aren't you? So once again, we can see that it's, generally speaking, easier to go from a low entropy state to a higher entropy state than the reverse. We'll talk more about this in a future lesson. Now, as we think about the entropy in a system over the course of a chemical reaction or a physical process, we need to remember that the entropy, and of course S represents entropy, the entropy of a gas is the highest of them all. That is the highest entropy state that you can have in a chemical reaction for all practical purposes. Then if you have an aqueous solution, it's a little bit less because you have ions swimming around in a solvent. And so that's going to have more entropy than a pure liquid, like uh, just a uh, bottle of distilled water or something like that. And of course, that's going to have a higher entropy than a solid. Solids are the lowest. And so that's the hierarchy of entropy whenever we're thinking about states of matter. Solid is the lowest, then liquid, aqueous is the second highest, and of course gas is the highest. And if we're thinking about just in terms of temperature, systems at a higher temperature are going to have a higher or a greater entropy than systems at a lower temperature. So if you heat something up, well, you're increasing the entropy. If you cool something down, you're decreasing the entropy as long as you're not uh, changing states. How about no change in state at all? Well, for systems where there is no change in state or temperature, this is where you have to count the particles. Systems with more particles have greater entropy than those with fewer particles. So let's take a look at this example. The diagrams below represent two gases at the same temperature. Which of them has greater entropy? Explain your answer. Well, they're both gases, so we can't say that you know one is a gas, one's a solid. That, that's not going to answer the question. And they're at the same temperature, so temperature doesn't help. So the tiebreaker in that case is the number of molecules. And so as you can see, the, the picture on the right here, the one that has the green molecules, has a much larger number of molecules than the state on the left. And so if two systems are at the same temperature and in the same state, the one with more particles will have the greater entropy. So the gas on the right has greater entropy. Let's try a few examples here where we have predicting or we're asked to predict the sign of delta S or the change in entropy for each of the following reactions. So let's see how this is done. Well, in this case, you can see that we're going from carbon dioxide solid, which has a low entropy, to carbon dioxide gas, which has a higher entropy. So solid to gas, well, that's an increase in entropy, isn't it? So we're going to call that a positive delta S sign. How about this reaction? We have HCl gas plus ammonia gas yields ammonium chloride solid. Well, in this case, we're moving from gas molecules, which have a high entropy, down to solid or a solid state, which has the lowest entropy. So gas down to solid, that's a drop in entropy, isn't it? So that's why we'd say this has a negative sign for delta H. Let's try this one. In this case, we have a couple ions that are in the aqueous state, and they're moving to the solid state. Well, which direction is that? Well, we said that aqueous is a pretty high entropy state, isn't it? In fact, it's second only to gas. Solid is the lowest. So if we're going from aqueous down to solid, that's a drop in entropy, isn't it? So that would be a negative sign for delta S. Here we have another case. This time we have a solid, and it's moving to a mixture between solid 
and gas. So what's that going to be? Well, if it's all solid, that's way down here at the bottom, isn't it? Whereas solid and gas, well, gas is certainly higher than just solid by itself. So this is going to be an increase in entropy as well, because we have a gas being produced from a solid. One more example here. In this case, we have two sulfur dioxide gas plus oxygen gas yields two sulfur trioxide gas. As you can see, the state of matter is not going to help us, is it? Because it's gas to gas. So what's the tiebreaker? Well, we count the molecules. And as we can see here, on the left side, we have three molecules, two of these plus one of this. So that's three molecules on the left side. And on the right side, we have two molecules. So it's going from three to two. So three molecules to two, that sounds like a drop in entropy, isn't it? Since we're dropping the number of molecules. So that's a negative delta S. If you use these principles, you should be able to determine the sign of delta S for pretty much any reaction. Now, if you were ever to find a reaction where there were uh, perhaps gases and you had three moles on the left side and three moles on the right side, well, in that case, it'd be pretty hard to tell the sign, wouldn't it? We'd have to take a guess that the delta S is going to be pretty close to zero in that case. Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please slam that like button, and I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to learn some more about entropy and thermodynamics. Hope to see you then.